70 years ago, a small group of British businessmen traveled to China to unlock opportunities between the two countries. They became known as the icebreakers. Meet the bridge builders, the individuals who dare to think beyond the horizon and open up our world. My name is uh, Simon Howarth. I think everyone in China calls me Shimo, and I've been engaged with China now since I think 2012. I'm an entrepreneur mainly in biotechnology and now in agricultural technology, but I've set up I think 17, 18 companies now and we have some amazing projects going on, but it's all stemmed out of a very long engagement with China. Back in about 2016, I was speaking to my father and he said, you do remember that the family has a very long engagement with China. My father said, look, go and look in the attic. And I went upstairs in the, the family home and there was a chest full of information, including my grandmother's diaries, but also some books by my earlier ancestors. And it became clear that I was the fifth generation in a row to engage with China. My great-great-grandfather had started the trade in 1874. And when I took my son, my eldest son, George, over to China, he was actually the sixth generation in a continuous line to engage with China. I think when I opened the chest, the biggest impression was when I found the 1963 diary and I was going through the pages and I came across Wuhan, where I have set up my business in 2012. There's a piece here, the date April the 14th, 1963. So we got to Wuhan at 11.45 and were received by a smiling deputation and as usual, much handshaking. And it was at that moment I suddenly realized the extent to which I was walking in my grandparents' footsteps. And that's an extraordinary thing to discover. You think you're acting completely independently in your little world when you suddenly find that it's all a continual connection with the family's history. Standing on the banks of the Yangtze River hearing the stories about the first Yangtze River Bridge, and then finding out that that was exactly the same place that my grandparents had stood and probably heard the same stories. Those are very, very deep personal moments that you'll never forget. So the first connection with China was in the silk trade. So this is in the days of the Industrial Revolution in Manchester and Macclesfield and the family was involved in silk. And my great-great-grandfather was importing silk from Jiangsu over to Manchester in the UK. So at that stage, we were taking product from China. I'm now returning product to China. I'm now taking biotechnology from the UK over to China. It's using artificial intelligence to analyze healthcare data to identify opportunities for new drugs. So we're able to identify a disease and a disease pathway and find drugs that interrupt that pathway in a way that researchers have never been able to do before. A lot of people would say that we're seeking to bring technology to China because that's what it needs. That's not actually what we're doing. We're looking at technologies with their global opportunities and China represents one of the most important places for those technologies to be brought to effect. I have a view of the world and I'm always seeking sources of capital and sources of market. And China was one of those places where you got both. You have capital and market in the same environment. I also think that there's a very important stage that I will describe as China's turn. I think the baton of global leadership passes slowly from country to country. And right now, it's China's turn. And so to be involved in the growth and development of that relationship is very important. Here he is. Hey, Tan Tan. Hello. How are you? Yeah, Simon. How are you? How are you? 
Yu Zhentan is an editor of the Changchang Daily in, in Wuhan. And it was really Tan Tan who promoted the whole story. He made the effort to come over here to engage with the family, and he ended up writing an amazing book called Cambridge Notes about the six generations uh, engagement with China. The book has been received extraordinarily well uh, in, in China. Tan Tan and I have done many book signing events and presentation events, but he has done hundreds of engagements with Chinese people, young people, old people, to introduce the story. We're in an interesting time. If you look back over the last few years, the relations sometimes between China and the UK have gone the wrong direction. China is stepping into really important global role right now. And taking on that challenge, that responsibility is not easy. My dream for this bridge building activity between the UK and China is not to do with business. The dream is about personal connections. We have had projects where we have linked young people in the UK with young people in China, because my dream is that the two nations understand each other at the personal level. And that takes a lot of work, that takes a lot of removal of prejudice and misunderstanding and misfacts from both sides. And it's not about political differences, it's about human engagement. In my grandparents' diary, they wrote that they drove around Wuhan for two hours and they saw four cars. Now, if you drive around Wuhan now, there's a lot more vehicles there. Let's move to the bridge. Right now, there's only four cars on the bridge compared to the capacity of the bridge between the UK and China and between China and the UK. And so this is the only time in my life where my job is to create a traffic jam, try and get more traffic on that bridge between the UK and China.